Alrighty, so I just want to start by thanking everyone for coming to this talk today. Um, and then this PowerPoint is just going to go over a little bit about my practice and the artwork that's like in the show. Um, first, I'm going to give a little background about me and my relationship with the arts. Starting from a young age, art was always something that was present in my life and that I enjoyed doing. While growing up, I really loved creating and experimenting with a bunch of different mediums. I took every art class that was available to me in school. However, it wasn't until high school uh, when I got interested and started painting. I found that watercolor became my favorite medium because I loved the way I was able to mix the paint and apply several layers that would dry quickly. The painting of the flower is actually the first watercolor painting I ever created and I made it in kindergarten. In the fall of 2019, I got the opportunity to work at the Disneyland Resort hand painting Christmas ornaments. It wasn't until after I finished the internship and returned to OSU that I started working on my body of work about fairy tales. I've always loved watching Disney's animated films and I really wanted to learn more about where some of these stories originated from. A fairy tale is defined as being a children's story about magical and imaginary beings and lands. Many of the fairy tales that we are familiar with through the media have been fabricated to be magical, romantic, and extremely happy. In my work, I read grim fairy tales and create paintings in response to them as a way to show the dark and disturbing themes of these stories. These grim stories led themselves well to watercolor as the primary medium because of the contrast of the transparent paint juxtaposing the dark subject matter. Each painting embodies a different fairy tale, including well-known stories and some more obscure. Through the visual storytelling of these paintings, I am able to explore these dark themes and give a new understanding to how we interpret fairy tales. My work involves doing a lot of reading and research about fairy tales. I write down notes and ideas about the story and from, from that information, I create some basic digital sketches of the work. This is what one of the digital sketches looks like. I prefer to do these digitally um, rather than on paper because it's easier for me to experiment with different color palettes and I can get a more realistic idea of what I want the composition to look like. In this presentation, I'm gonna share the digital works for each finished watercolor because I think it's kind of cool to see like how the ideas evolve into the finished product. So this is the finished painting for the digital sketch from the last slide. As you can see, the finished piece has a lot more rendering and values are pushed further than the digital work. This painting is um, based off a more obscure fairy tale called The Moon, which is about a town that didn't have a moon or any stars in the sky. So they put this little moon in a tree and it would project a moon into the sky. Um, I usually like to use lighting as a way to assist the visual storytelling and it is and in this painting, I specifically wanted to be able to portray that effect that the moon looked like it was being projected. This is the digital sketch for Bright Sun's Bring to Light, and this sketch looks pretty different from the finished watercolor. I wasn't really happy with the lack of color in the original sketch, so I decided to push this painting in a different direction. This story is about a tailor's apprentice who was searching for work because he needed money. After being unsuccessful, he decided to rob and kill a man that looked wealthy. However, he didn't find much money. When the man was dying, he spoke his last words, which were, bright suns will bring to light. Years passed and the man carried on with his life until one morning, the man was sitting in front of the window as his wife brought him his coffee. As she poured it into the saucer, the sun reflected off the cup into the ceiling and creating circles above them. The wife was confused and concerned by the phenomenon. So the man had to tell his wife what happened with the guy that he killed many years ago. And he made her promise not to tell anyone the truth. The wife ended up telling a friend about the accident and within days, the whole town knew. The man was then sentenced to death for his crime. So after all, the bright sun did bring it to light. This is the digital sketch for Cinderella and the finished piece. The story of Cinderella has been reinterpreted so many times through the media. Many people are familiar with Disney's animated version of Cinderella. In that film, when the prince comes to find Cinderella, her stepsisters attempt to fit into the shoe of the glass slipper, but their feet are too big. However, in the original Grimm fairy tale version, Cinderella actually wears a gold shoe and when the stepsister's foot doesn't fit into the shoe, the stepmother cuts off her toe. The prince doesn't know 
He had the wrong girl until he discovers the blood dripping from the shoe. This fairy tale is definitely one of the darker stories that I've illustrated, but I like to incorporate some more gory imagery into these pieces. This is the digital painting for the Bee Queen and the finished work. This story is about a man who must complete a series of challenges in order to win the king's daughter. After the man passes the first two challenges, he proceeds to the last challenge where the king had lined up his three sleeping daughters and the man must figure out which of the girls ate the honey. Earlier in the story, the man had saved a beehive from being burned, so he summoned the queen bee to help him in this challenge. The queen bee went to each of the girls and tasted the different sweeteners on their lips. The bee was able to identify which of the daughters had eaten the honey, so the man won the final challenge and the king's daughter. This painting definitely is one of my favorite pieces in the series because I really enjoy the vibrant colors. This is a digital sketch from my most recent painting. It's a story based off, it's a painting based off a story called Allerleirau, which is a German word um, that means many furred creature. This story is about a beautiful girl who ran away from her kingdom because her family wanted her because her father wanted to marry her. After wandering the woods for a few days, some members a part of the of a different kingdom found her and offered her a place to stay as long as she would help out in the kitchen. To hide her beauty, she would disguise herself in a large fur coat and cover the rest of her skin in ash. One week the kingdom was hosting several balls and the girl was allowed to go as long as she was back in time to serve soup to the king at the end of the night. So she took off the fur and soot and went to the ball and danced till it was time to go back to the kitchen. And that night she left a gold ring in the bottom of the king's soup bowl. The next night she went to the ball again and she danced with the king. While they were dancing, the king slipped the gold ring from the soup bowl on her finger without her noticing. She left the ball later that night and she rushed to put the fur and soot back on before having delivered soup to the king. In the rush, she forgot to put the soot on one of her fingers, and she was still wearing the ring that the king put on her finger. When she brought the king his soup, he noticed the white finger in the gold ring and knew it was the beautiful girl from the ball, and the king ended up marrying her. This is the digital sketch for God's Food and the finished piece. The story is about two sisters, one of which was rich with no children. The other sister was poor and had many children. The poor sister came over and begged for her rich sister to give her some food to eat, but the rich sister refused. When the rich sister's husband came home, he cut into a loaf of bread and an abundance of blood began to pour out of the bread. When the rich sister told her husband what happened, he proceeded to go help the poor sister and her children. However, it was too late. By the time he arrived to help he found the poor sister and all her children dead. This is the digital sketch for the blue light and the finished piece. And in this story, it's about a man who needed to, a place to stay because he had lost his job. He found a house with an old witch who offered to provide him with food and let him stay the night as long as he would help her with some of the chores around her property. One of the tasks she gave him was to go down into a well and grab the blue light from the bottom. She lowered him down and he grabbed the light, but when it was time to bring him back up, she wouldn't bring him up all the way until he handed her the light. The man saw that the witch was trying to trick him, so he didn't give her the light and went back to the bottom of the well. He knew he, had, he would die at the bottom of the well, so he decided to light his pipe as one last pleasure before he died. He lit it using the blue light and, when the little, and then a little man appeared in the opposite corner of the well. The little man helped him get out of the well and the witch never got the blue light. And this work doesn't have a digital sketch because it was one of the first paintings I made for this series. This piece was inspired by a fairy tale called The Three Snake Leaves. This story is about a woman who wouldn't marry a man until he promised that when she died that he would be buried with her. And uh, when she got ill and died, the man and the coffin were taken down to the royal vault. Where he, when he was down there, a snake approached him with three leaves and the man placed them over her mouth and eyes and she was brought back to life by these magic leaves. <laughs> And then this piece also doesn't have a digital sketch because it was the first one I made for this series. Um, it's based off a story called The Three Little Men in the Wood. In the story, a girl is sent into the woods by her stepmother. She wasn't allowed to come home until she filled her basket with strawberries. It was snowing outside and the stepmother wanted the girl to freeze to death and never return. In the woods, the girl came across a house with three little men. 
And after she shared her only piece of bread with them, they took her to their garden and she found fresh strawberries growing in the snow. So she was able to return home. All right, that concludes the PowerPoint. Um, I hope this gave everyone a little more insight about the artwork and the show. And if you wanna see more of the work, you can check out my website. And I just wanna thank everyone for listening and I can answer any questions now. <laughs> All right, wonderful. Thank you very much, Amelia. Um, does anyone have any questions that they would like to that they would like to ask? Yeah, Amelia, um, wonderful presentation. Uh, I really appreciated getting the background on the uh, fairy tales and also that sort of contrast between the Disney presentation of those stories versus your research and um, that the visual depiction of that. I'm wondering, has this in any way altered your feelings about Disney once you started to learn a little bit more about the sources and stories? Um, I don't think it's altered my feelings about Disney. I think it's just more it's kind of made me like appreciate it all more just because now I know the background of these stories too, along with all the different versions. Um, uh, like for like Cinderella, for example, there's so many different Cinderella stories that Disney's created and just other companies too. And it's kind of cool to just to see everybody's different twist on it. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah. What? I have a question, Amelia. What do you think it is that draws you? I mean, you didn't present these in any um, kind of glossed over way in the same kind of way that um, that Disney might have. So I'm curious what draws you to the darker elements of the stories? Um, I really like when I'm reading them, I get kind of like visuals in my head of, you know, just the imagery that I'm reading, I guess. And so I'm always really drawn to the ones that like have the blood like coming out of the bread or something because it's just visually like I can visualize it that's so I just think it's so weird and cool and I'm really drawn to that kind of weird quirky I don't know just the weird subject matter I guess. It's really interesting seeing the digital sketches with the finished paintings because the digital sketches have a wonderful quality but the watercolors have so much more nuance in terms of the use of color and uh, they're so beautifully rendered. I wonder where do you get your reference? What do you use for reference material for those paintings? Um, I usually sometimes I'll take my own reference pictures like sometimes if it's hands or face I like to use my own like take my own stuff but other times I'll like just look up images of like the moon and just kind of go off a couple images of that, so. Great. You're always welcome to put questions in the chat too if you don't wanna ask them out loud. So uh, Amelia, a uh, question here on the chat from Hannah, which was your, which piece was your favorite in the series uh, to create? I really liked creating the bee queen. I really liked the colors of that one. And I also really liked the bright suns brings it to light because that painting is kind of like an awkward shape. It's very long. And I don't usually paint on like that kind of, I don't know, that shape. So it's kind of fun to just, you know, make a different kind of painting, I guess, so. Well, I, I really enjoy how you simplify your compositions and really kind of get to the essence of the story. And um, I agree, I think that the uh, B painting is, is particularly beautiful and well-rendered and the, um, as well as the the sun reflects it or whatever it's called. W one thing that struck me when you were telling the stories was there's a lot of little men in these stories. <laughs> like <what? laughs> They just sort of magically appear, these little guys. 
Yeah, I've definitely noticed that a lot of the stories have similar themes. There's a lot of like little men and a lot of like wizards and witches and uh, a lot of bread too. Everybody ate bread back then, so. <laughs> Staple. Uh -huh. Yeah. Do you see yourself, Amelia, do you see yourself continuing this, continuing these pieces or is this kind of the culmination of this work and then on to something new? I think I'm going to continue with it a little longer and then I'll probably move on to something new. So. Um, Cameron's asking, uh, were there any fairy tales that you were drawn to but struggled with ideation um, or creation? Um, I read a bunch of them and sometimes I'll read them and I just don't really get anything out of them. There's no like nothing that's visually striking to me. So a lot of the time I'm reading them and just kind of tossing them to the side. And then and a lot of the time I'll take them to that digital sketch phase, but then they won't make it to a painting um, just because once I get the ideas down, it's not as strong as I feel some of the other ones are. So. Amelia, how many, I'm sorry, I keep asking questions. Um, how many of those sketches, I mean, how many different variations of those sketches do you go through? You showed us some. And so I'm, I mean, I'm guessing those are kind of the final versions, but is, are there a lot of different kind of variations that you go through before you decide on a piece to move forward into the watercolor? Yeah, before I do the digital sketch, I'll do like a super rough, just, you know, sketch of kind of what I'm thinking. And sometimes I'll move things around. Like once I get to the digital phase, I'll be like, okay, this isn't working. Maybe I should move some things around. And then um, that's kind of when it, and then even sometimes the digital sketch, it doesn't end up looking how the final does. So it's really just kind of tweaking it over and over again. And sometimes I'll read stories and I'll get like, a bunch of different sketch ideas from like different parts of the story. And then I only will choose to illustrate like one of those. Um, so yeah. Do you have any that you have more than one? I mean, is that something that you're interested in more than one sketch to, to illuminate the story? Um, I've thought about that. I just haven't done that yet. So Hmm. Anything else? Any last last calls for questions? Um, was there anything uh, in uh, other than your interest in fairy tales that you took from your experience uh, working with Disney or working at Disney? Um, so much, <laughs> um, like, I'm trying to think, I don't, I mean, those experiences at Disney taught me a lot, but nothing that really I put into my fairy tale, like how I'm constructing them, I think, um, it's not, I don't know. I think they're very separate, but I think that my appreciation for Disney has led to why I'm so interested in this. Hmm. All right, well, maybe we'll wrap it up here. Um, thank you everyone for coming. If you'd like to stay and chat with Amelia for a little bit, I'm going to turn over the hosting duties to her. And so you are more than welcome to stay um, and ask her any kind of questions that you would want to in private. So let's give Amelia a hand. Thank you very much, Amelia. It was very lovely. Um, thank you so much for coming, everyone. Well done. Well done. Awesome work, Amelia. It turned out so amazing. I'm so glad I could make it all the way from New York. Thank you. <laughs> I'm so glad you could make it. <laughs>
thanks for the intro. And a plate over there. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. Yep. <laughs> I, it's totally worth it though. <laughs>